January this year. Israel invaded Gaza in response to Hamas rocket attacks. TVs around the world broadcast pictures of destroyed homes and dead and wounded Palestinian civilians. Months later, allegations of human rights violations were still in the news. But you wouldn't know it from this piece in the News of the World or from this piece on the Mirror's website. Both about the threat Israel faces from its neighbors. And you certainly wouldn't know that both journalists' trips had been organized and paid for by an organization called BICOM, the Britain-Israel Communications and Research Center. BICOM is one of the most well-funded pro-Israel lobby groups in Britain. One man who knows BICOM is Professor David Newman. A few years ago, he worked alongside BICOM to help get across Israel's message in British universities. They tend to be very blindly supportive. Um, in, in other words, there, there is clearly a debate. It's not just a debate here. It's a huge debate inside Israel, whether Israel should or should not continue to control the West Bank, whether settlements are legal or illegal, moral or immoral. And what you often find is that the groups such as BICOM outside Israel tend to close down that sort of debate. They tend to say you have to be totally supportive of Israel, full stop, whatever Israel does. BICOM's chairman is Pochul Zabludovic, who contributed to David Cameron's campaign funds. The Sunday Times ranks him as the 18th richest man in Britain. Yet outside his circle, few people seem to know much about him. I've never met the guy. What is interesting is that he wasn't part of the traditional Anglo-Jewish establishment, but there is something in England which has been founded in the past 10 years called the Jewish Leadership Council, which is sort of a house of lords of the big Jewish givers or donors. I and mean, my understanding is after he sort of funded BICOM, he was then co-opted onto the Jewish Leadership Council. So I asked David Goldberg, Rabbi Emeritus of London's largest liberal synagogue. Not a name I know. It's not come across my consciousness mm -hmm. in my dealings in anglo jewry In fact, Mr. Zabludovic holds Finnish citizenship. Today he has a home here in North London's exclusive Bishop's Avenue worth at least three million. His father made a fortune selling Israeli artillery and mortars around the world. Pochel also used to be in the arms business, then moved into property, buying four hotel casinos in Las Vegas. His Tamares group, which is registered in Liechtenstein, has business interests worldwide. Recently, the Zabludovices were guests at Madonna's 51st birthday party in the Italian town of Portofino. More interestingly, Mr. Zabludovic, as well as chairman, is also bankrolling BICOM. Here are its latest report and accounts. These show that last year it received no less than £800,000, a huge donation, from Poko Zabludovic. The accounts also contain a very interesting clause. The company meets its day-to-day -day working capital requirements through the support of P. Zabludovic. P. Zabludovic provides monthly financial support to the company by way of donations. He has pledged his ongoing support of the company for the 12 months from the balance sheet date. He has also pledged further support as the company may require. Mr. Zabludovic has given a further 1.3 million over the previous two years. Dispatches has also discovered that Mr. Zabludovic has a business interest in the Middle East that raises questions about his and BICOM's approach to a peace settlement between Israel and the Palestinians. We're traveling along the highway from Israel to the occupied West Bank. On the other side of the security wall are Palestinian villages. We're on our way to Mali Adumim, an Israeli settlement where we have discovered that the biggest building, this shopping mall, belongs to a company partly owned by Mr. Zabludovic. 
Mali Adumim is regarded by Israelis as being part of Israel, but counts as an illegal settlement under international law. It's settlements such as these which, in the eyes of many, pose a massive obstacle to peace in the Middle East. The big question is this. Does it matter that a big business tycoon like Mr. Zabludovic, with such a vested interest in one of these settlements, is also a major donor to the pro-Israeli lobby in Britain? Any settlement of Israelis built within the West Bank, which is defined as occupied territory, in international terminology is illegal. Isn't it quite important that a figure who has such a major vested interest in the settlements is also the major funder of BICOM? That would tend to indicate in what direction the message of BICOM is going. It's going to be more supportive of settlements or less critical of settlements than if someone from the left was investing their money into BICOM. Does it disturb you that somebody who's publicly promoting the interests of Israel here in Britain has business interests in the West Bank? I would guess that anybody who invests money there has taken a calculated decision that this will not be going back under even the most favorable of peace treaties. So they've made a business judgment which will be no doubt vindicated by profits. We asked to interview Mr. Zabludovic, but he declined. Instead, he wrote to us agreeing that he was a minority shareholder in the company that owns the Mali Adumim Mao. He said, In terms of my position on the issue of settlements, I remain a major proponent for the creation of a Palestinian state. I understand that Israel will need to make concessions for this to be achieved. I did, though, get to talk to BICOM's chief executive, Lorna Fitzsimons. We're a very, we're a very open organisation, and you couldn't get away with working with the level of journalists that we work with across the whole spectrum if we weren't absolutely o open. If you're being transparent with people, we should know who your donors are. If our donors were able to influence our operational policy, then maybe you might have a point. But one of the things that we were absolutely and utterly um, set up to be is avowedly independent, um, that nobody influences our policy. So I asked about Mr. Zabludovic's influence within BICOM. Our chairman, Puyu, um, is no different than anybody else. He's one amongst, you know, 120 individuals that support us. I asked if it disturbed her that BICOM's chairman has a commercial interest in a settlement which is viewed as illegal under international law. I don't know about any of his business interests whatsoever. It's never been discussed with us. The board never discussed their various independent individual business interests. We are solely here to provide journalists and interested policy makers and opinion formers with the ability to scrutinize more closely the various different strands in the debate that is Israel. There are, of course, other groups lobbying on behalf of Israel in Britain, in addition to BICOM and the Conservative and Labour Friends of Israel. There's the Jewish Leadership Council, the Zionist Federation, and the Board of Deputies of British Jews. Aside from seeking to influence politicians and opinion formers, which is the stock and trade of any lobby, some members of the pro-Israel lobby are also especially aggressive towards British television and the press. I have spoken to editors who, who just say, actually, it's just not worth the trouble. I, I stay away from the, I, I stay away from the, the subject, or I stay away from staring it up. The BBC and the Guardian are portrayed as being the biggest media enemies of Israel that exist, maybe in Europe, but certainly in the UK. And the lobby keeps them under constant attack. Well, it, it's off the scale in, in terms of Israel. I mean, I see other ambassadors, but I can't. I'm, I'm trying to, to see if I can remember ever being um, carpeted or taken to task seriously over, over our coverage of countries. And I, I'm, offhand, I can't think of one. 